While there is a safety driver behind the wheel, these trucks are operating completely autonomously. They belong to Aurora, a self-driving technology company hoping to launch with no one in the cab by next year. Today, if you want to take strawberries from California to Dallas, it takes about three days. With the Aurora driver, you'll be able to do that in about 24 hours. Uh, Self-driving trucks can see better, they can see further, they're not getting tired, they can operate 24-7. That means that a truck that could normally do 450 or 500 miles a day could do 1,000 to 1,100 miles a day. That significantly increases the profitability of running that truck. The introduction of autonomy in trucking could have a major impact on the industry. Our economy runs on the trucking industry. As the industry says, if you bought it, a truck brought it. It's a huge ecosystem with over like a trillion dollar of spend just in the U.S. The pandemic highlighted the importance of supply chain and demand has only continued to climb. A goods movement probably doubled over the last three years and the whole industry has been sort of racing to have enough capacity. CNBC went behind the scenes with Aurora to see its self-driving operation in Texas. We've driven right around about a half million miles pulling loads for customers. I think we're over 1,800 trailers delivered. It has been a challenging road for self-driving trucks with several startups throwing in the towel. The technology has taken far longer to realize than initially anticipated. And even as driverless cars hit the roads, it is yet to be seen how well they'll function in the wild. Across the industry, many folks expect that it will take a couple of years before we'll even see point-to-point -point deliveries uh, without the help of engineering talent. I think it's tremendous opportunities for driver assist and improved safety, less driver fatigue, but I cannot see 80,000 pound trucks in my lifetime running up and down the road just as harmless, gentle giants. You can get a ride in a self-driving vehicle in San Francisco. You can get one in Phoenix. We're on the road pulling loads for customers every day. This will be the next transformation in that space, and it's going to make it easier to get around. It's going to make it safer to get around. Aurora was founded in 2017 by several self-driving industry experts. Sterling Anderson, who previously headed Tesla's autopilot division, Drew Bagnell, who led perception and autonomy at Uber, and Chris Ermson, who helped start and led Waymo at Google. We're on the mission to deliver the benefits of self-driving technology safely, quickly, and broadly. In 2020, it acquired Uber's self-driving unit and received a $400 million investment in exchange for 26% of the combined company. Aurora plans to work together with Uber for ride-hailing of its self-driving cars. Uber and Dara, they want to focus on building the network. How do you connect people with the, the means to get where they want to go? We want to focus on building the driver. And so for both of us, as we talked about the deal, it just made too much sense not to do. The following year, Aurora went public through a SPAC, raising $2 billion. The company spent the first few years working on autonomy for cars, but had its eye on trucking as well. Cars are a lot easier to operate, but we knew that the software and the system was ultimately going to have to work on trucks as well. We saw that as a huge opportunity, and so we designed that in. Aurora says its autonomous system will bring a number of advantages over a human driver behind the wheel. It'll improve fuel efficiency. By driving at 65 miles an hour versus 75 miles an hour, something like 20-25% improvement in fuel economy. It doesn't get distracted, it doesn't get tired. There's huge safety benefits. There's about half a million accidents a year that trucks are involved in, and we think we can reduce that dramatically. From a consistency of reliability perspective, I think it will help kind of deliver a more consistent service. We're expecting to be able to kind of get a level of utilization out of the vehicle that we just don't see today in, tr in traditional transportation. The company plans to offer its autonomous truck system as a subscription. If you're FedEx, for example, you'll call a PACCAR and you'll say, I'd like to buy a Peterbilt 579, which is one of these trucks, 
and I'd like to buy it with the Aurora driver installed on it. We expect the Aurora driver to cost comparable to what a human driver costs. This is one of our self-driving trucks over here. It's got a combination of lasers, radar, and camera that allow it to see the world. If you look up at the top here, we got an oval looking thing in the middle. That's our proprietary first light LiDAR. That allows us to see out on the road further than anyone else can. We can see 400 plus meters. Aurora says its self-driving trucks are feature complete and are now undergoing testing to refine the software. At the end of the first quarter, we reached the milestone of the Aurora driver having everything that it needs to be able to run autonomously. Our goal now is to make those capabilities better and better through the end of this year as we skate towards that 2024 goal of commercialization. Texas, it's the largest U.S. intercontinent uh, freight market. Almost 15, 1-5% of all freight in the U.S. is moving on the Texas Triangle, so Dallas, Houston, uh, San Antonio. It also happens to be next to our most important trading partner, which is Mexico. So it plays a vital role into the U.S. economy. We knew that the place to be was Texas. It's the heart of freight in the U.S. The road right here is about 4,500 trucks a day. Aurora has been training its trucks on routes between Dallas and Houston and Dallas and El Paso. They drive fully autonomously with safety drivers behind the wheel ready to take over if something goes wrong. It is hoping to remove drivers altogether by the end of 2024. Trucks start and stop their trips at terminals outside of the cities, where the customer will drop or pick up a trailer and complete the urban part of the delivery. Terminals are where we base our autonomous vehicles and also where we do scaling, fueling, downloading software. We have maintenance on site. Our goal is to, over the course of the next 10 to 20 years, to grow our, our network across the United States. So we're here at our Palmer, Texas hub. This is the first automated truck hub on the planet. We have about 15 trucks operate out of here, about 10 of them running every day. We've got scales on the ground. We can use these big QR codes to calibrate the truck just to make sure everything's good with the sensors, and then we can get it out on the road. When a AV arrives in a landing zone, our end goal is to turn that vehicle around and get it back out as soon as possible. We fully envision this to be a 24-7 facility in the very near future. Aurora's model is interesting. It's probably the likely model that we see initial autonomous trucking uh, experiences take place. We've got an operator whose job it is to pay attention to what's happening on the road around us. And on the right seat up here, we have another operator whose job is to pay attention to what the Aurora driver's thinking. While on these missions, we will take notes of the truck's performance. I remember when we first started in surface roads in Houston, we used to have problems making left turns, right turns when there's a lot of traffic. But uh, in the past couple of months, we've, that's been a lot better now. Aurora first started hauling loads for customers in 2021, working with companies such as FedEx, Uber Freight, Schneider, and Werner. We haul something like 50 loads a week right now, uh, and we'll be growing that over the course of the year. It's not really about making money at this point. Uh, it's really about making sure that the product we're building actually serves its purpose. We've moved hundreds of thousands of miles and probably close to um, over seven million pounds of cargo that we had moved on those Texas lanes. We'll start here between Dallas and Houston and then quickly we'll add Dallas to El Paso and then we'll grow east and west across the Sun Belt and then ultimately across the United States. Aurora expects expanding to future markets to be easier and faster with the autonomous trucks capable of adapting to new regions. So there'll be small amounts of incremental uh, validation we do, but basically it'll be a copy-paste. And we're going to work with our customers to figure out where's the most useful place for us to go next. There have been dozens of companies that have started up with the hope to create autonomous trucking operations. But really over the last 12 months, we've seen a number of those companies shut down. Several startups working on self-driving trucks have struggled. Starsky Robotics, one of the earlier companies to focus on self-driving trucks, closed up shop in 2020. 
Embark, another early entrant focused on trucks, laid off 70% of its staff earlier this year, eventually selling its technology to Applied Intuition for $71 million. And Too Simple, a San Diego-based autonomous truck startup founded in 2015, is leaving the U.S. market to focus on China and Asia. We really expected that most companies were going to fail, and so from day one we've been thinking about how do we make sure we survive. All of this has been expensive. Aurora lost $1.7 billion last year. It's not yet proven to be commercially viable, so it requires an enormous amount of capital investment just to basically operate and continue to move its R&D function along. It's going to be a long road before uh, investors get any real payback. Even if autonomous trucks succeed, they will be bound by regulators, potentially restricting where they can operate. One of the realities of having autonomous trucking is that you need the regulatory environment and framework to be supportive of it. What happens if a state like Texas or Kansas or Illinois or California passes laws that actually prohibit autonomous trucks? We've seen situations where state legislatures can be very activist, particularly taking a standpoint of pro-labor in recent years. California lawmakers are advancing a bill requiring safety operators behind the wheel of heavy-duty autonomous trucks. We've worked with the folks at the Department of Transportation at a federal level, at, with NHTSA, with FMCSA. We've worked with the California DOT, and we spend time meeting with policymakers and legislators as well so that they can understand the opportunity and the risks. A lot of questions remain about who is responsible if a autonomous truck gets into an accident. The trucking companies themselves have a lot of questions, and if anyone understands the liability of running trucks, it's the trucking companies. They have been subject to these massive uh, amounts of lawsuits. Then there is the concern from drivers. I've you know, talked to my colleagues about, and they're worried about getting replaced by a machine. Autonomous trucks are incredibly controversial for truck drivers because they fear that their jobs could immediately go away. And while that's unlikely to happen, it's certainly going to start an enormous amount of emotion uh, among the driver population. Working as a truck driver is a challenging profession with high turnover. The average truck driver in the US 20 years ago was 35. 10 years ago it was 45. Now it's 55. The driver shortage has been talked about forever, but it's really a retention problem because every year there's 450,000 new CDLs. Many of them are called 90-day wonders. After 90 days, hey, this is not for me. Spending hours on the road, it's very exhausting. Also, you don't get to spend much time with your loved ones. You don't get the work-life balance also. Aurora sees its autonomous trucks helping alleviate the driver shortage and doing some of the harder parts of the job. Drivers, instead of doing long drives, there would be more drivers doing short local deliveries. I worked in the oil and gas and um, we used to drive about 70 hours a week. And I know I've seen a lot of drivers tired and fatigued while driving. And But now coming to Aurora, we, we're building this technology that would help drivers drive less on the road less uh, accidents. It says that there will be lots of ancillary jobs to support self-driving operations as well. Think about it like uh, airport command centers where planes come in and they tell them where to land and things like that. So we have drivers like me who look forward to like working in those departments. And even with autonomous trucks on the roads, they won't replace drivers entirely. You don't see anybody talking about autonomous trucking north of Interstate 40 where the snow falls. And the kind of trucking that I do, I'm pretty sure it will never be replaced by autonomous trucks. We see automated driving complementing people driving. And my expectation is that if you are a truck driver today, you will be able to retire a truck driver. Over the next couple of decades, it's gonna be incredible to see the improvement in safety on our roads. It'll be dramatically easier for us to move goods through the world. It's important that the autonomous trucking manufacturers and the industry, uh, if they want this technology to succeed, really spend an enormous amount of effort on the front end trying to drive the right regulatory framework for success. As this technology takes off, you're going to see 
a lot of backlash that happens. We have to head down this road and see where it leads us. Some people say AI can mean the end of civilization, but it could be a brave new world that's uh, full of wonder and reduced fatalities, reduced accidents. And it could be a whole new spate of problems that we don't see coming.